I'll start recording. We're good. Thank you. As chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, I find that due to the state of the emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with House Rule 67 and the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is an executive session on Senate bills in front of the Ways and Means Committee. Please note that there's no physical location for members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with emergency order and confirming that, all members of the committee and select legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom electronic meeting platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting by the Zoom platform or by telephone. All necessary access information has been made available in the House calendar and through the electronic calendar on the General Court website. The notice for this meeting complies with House Rules RSA 91A. Anyone who has a problem accessing the meeting should call 271-3600 or email hcs at life.state.nh.us. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. I want to introduce the staff that are on the meeting assisting us, Jennifer Four, the committee researcher. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting which is required under the right to know law. Representative Bernstein, you'll call the roll and identify those that have been replaced, placing members that are normally here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to you and good morning to everyone. It is May 11th, 2021. It's 9.34 a.m. We'll begin roll call with Representative Patrick O'Browney. Yes, I'm here in my home in Stratum and my wife is in the house. Sitting in for Mary Griffin, we're very happy to have Representative Don Johnson. Good evening. Uh, good morning. Yeah, it's morning. Thank you. I am here alone, and I will be keeping my um, mic on mute. I have two barking dogs. <laughs> good morning, and it's great to have you with us, Don. Thank we're you ready. for having me. I appreciate it. Representative Ullery. Uh, home in Hudson. The wife is in the house. That's it. Representative Ober. Home in Hudson, five cats indoors, one outside catching some rays. Nice. Representative Doucette. Good morning, Mr. Clerk. I'm joining you from Jupiter, Florida this morning. There are some workers on the property and it doesn't stink. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Uh, your clerk is Representative Burstein. I'm in my home office in Nottingham, New Hampshire. Representative Robert Elliott. I'm at uh, my daughter's house in Salem, New Hampshire. There's no one else here. Sitting in for Representative Janigian is Representative Tony Pimonti. You're muted, Representative. Representative Pimonti, you're muted. Sorry about that. I'm here in Sandown uh, in my home uh, and I'm by myself. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Representative Herschel Nunez. Good morning, Mr. Clerk. I am home alone in Pelham, New Hampshire. Good morning. Rep sitting in for Representative Tim Baxter, we are very happy to have Representative Maureen Mooney with us. Thank you. Good morning. I'm here in Merrimack at my home alone. Representative Spilsbury. Good morning. Home alone in Charlestown. Representative Tudor. Good morning. Home alone in Northwood. Representative Almy. Good morning. Home alone in Lebanon. Representative Ames. I'm here in my home office in Jaffrey alone. Representative Southworth. Here in Dover alone. Representative Malloy. Uh, Representative Thomas C. Schomburg. 
Good morning, Representative Bernstein. I'm here in Wilmot in my office, my wife's in her office, and we have the blue skies like your background here. Thank you. Representative Edith Tucker. I'm here in Randolph alone. Representative Gomarlo. I'm in Swansea alone. Representative Lofman. Good morning, visiting family in Somerville, Mass, but I am alone this morning. Good morning. Representative Gorg. Good morning, I am present and alone. Representative Hacken Phillips. Good morning, I am also present and alone. Representative James Murphy. Good morning, I am here alone in Hanover. And our chairman, Representative Norman Major. Representative Major. Good morning, I'm in my home office in Plasto and my wife is in the house. Mr. Chair, there are 23 members present. Oh, I just saw uh, Representative Malloy. Actually, we got a full house today. Uh, let's just ask Mr. Uh, Representative Malloy to identify. Yes, I am here uh, in Greenland uh, alone. Uh, sorry for uh, being a few minutes late. I just, uh, some other things going on. Thank you. As okay, long as you don't blame traffic, we'll- No traffic, no traffic to me. <laughs> Mr. Chair, there are 24 members present. Thank you, Representative Bernstein. Uh, Representative Almey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to ask for a Democratic caucus for probably 10 minutes. I don't know how long it'll take us to get where we're going, so it might be 15. Uh, try to keep it to 10 minutes. We certainly appreciate that. Um, you can have your Democratic caucus. Thank you. Um, Amanda? Do we, um, can we use your? Of course, I'll send it back out. Great, thank you, bye. So we will take a break for uh, 10 minutes. It is now 9.39, so we'll come back at 9.50.
Somebody has an open mic. Should we just get started without them? <laughs> They'll be coming along. <laughs> so they're talking about uh, 22 and 27. Is that is that a good assumption, Norm? Uh, yes. Right. Hey, 
uh, Alan, one of my bills got passed because they didn't show up, so. <laughs> Mr. Chair, it looks like Representative uh, Jerry Stringham has his hand up. Or he might have just put it down. He did a moment ago. Is it still up? No, yes, it is. He probably wants to say hello. Um, you want to let Jerry string them in, Jenny? I just promoted him. There he is. Handsome guy. Good morning, Jerry. Uh, once we um, go into executive session, we'll have to. Hey, good morning. Just on behalf of all the all the Democrats that are often meeting in the other room, I I think we should wait. That's all. I would just I, I just thought I would speak on behalf of the poor minority here while while you're all having fun at our uh, <laughs> at our absence. It's good you have that. It's good you're advocating for them, Representative. <laughs> It's nice to see you all and uh, enjoy listen I'll enjoy listening to your debate. So. Jerry, you used the wrong adjective there. You said the poor Democrats. It's poor Republicans. Get that yeah. correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's good to hear from you, Jerry. Jerry, where, where are you these days? You home? Uh, actually, today I'm in Maryland and uh, I'll be I'll yep. be back in New Hampshire tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So, but uh, I've been traveling for a while, but thanks for asking. Have a crab cake for me. <laughs> In fact, Pat, my brother said to say hello to you if I uh, ran oh, into thanks. you. thanks. Yeah, tell him I said hi. <clears throat> I went to his brother's wedding years and years ago. I didn't know Jerry. I knew his, I, I knew his brother through, his, through my wife. And uh, then Jerry made the connection last year <laughs> that, we, that, that I knew his brother. I didn't. I didn't make the connection that Stringham was the same Stringham. So huh. it's a small world. Yeah. Looks like yeah. our colleagues are coming back on. Okay, we'll have to. Uh... Apologies. It took a little bit longer than that, including to figure out how to get her. So. Okay. And. Um... So Jerry's back in the attendees, right? I'm trying to figure that out. How did we get Jerry in here? I did it, Alan. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now we can go into exec executive session. And... Uh, the calendar says starts with Senate Bill 3. We'll discuss Senate Bill 3 at the end. And we'll start with Senate Bill 22. Senate Bill 22-FN, an act relative to the sale of lucky seven tickets. Uh, Representative Doucette. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I move ought to pass on Senate Bill 22. Representative Doucette moves ought to pass on Senate Bill 22. And we have a second. First Dean was second. Representative Noon Noonan's. That was that was actually Representative Burstein who seconded, Mr. Chairman. Oh, oh, oh okay. I thought you said Hurstein. First of all, oh, forget it, forget it. <laughs> Thank you. Rep, uh, Representative Doucette, you want to speak to your motion? Certainly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Senate Bill 22, uh, in a nutshell, there are two specifics that it addresses. It's a uh, deal size for the lucky seven tickets, and it allows for a, a deal size of uh, up to 14000 and also uh, allows for uh, 50 cent, $1, and again, 25 cent denominations for lucky seven tickets. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 22? Uh, further, uh, Representative Ames. 
Uh, thank you. Um, during our review of this bill, there was some um, reference to changing the um, language that's in this bill regarding 25 cent tickets to make it instead of a, a mandatory provision that charitable organizations shall also offer 25 cent tickets, 25 cent and 50 cent tickets to make the 25 cent part of the, an option for the organizations. And my sense was that, uh, the, that um, many members of the committee thought that was a, a good idea. So I'm, my question is what's become of that or why, why not take the time to make that amendment if there is that kind of um, support for that? Uh, Representative Dusat. Yeah, I, I uh, thank you, Representative. I, I remember the conversation, but nobody came uh, to the forefront with with the uh, with the amendment. And uh, I know at least my position um, is that just just these changes are as are, are minimal changes and um, will be beneficial to the the charitable organizations as written. Any, any further discussion on Senate Bill 22? Oh, Mr. Chair. Representative Almey. Thank you. I did produce such an amendment because uh, the charities under our current law by mistake are required to buy the 25 cent tickets even though they aren't gonna use them. And this was brought forward to us by someone who does represent the paper tickets. Um, but I put that in an amendment which also got rid of sections one and two because I fervently believe that this kind of thing ought to be done by the commission. And because since I've been around this long, I know that the legislative intent very clearly was that these machines would be dispensers. And the I am offended by the fact that the lottery commission on changed them over to non-dispensers already and that this, the sections one and two are just affirming in law what they did the, by themselves. Thank you. So the amendment language is written if you wanted to wait for a future time or not. Uh, you could just pull that out, but it is connected at the moment with repealing sections one and two. Thank you. Had you had an amendment drawn up for that? Yes, I told you that. Uh, I can, I'm sorry, I, I did it a couple of weeks ago and then I forgot about it. So I can, I could share it on the screen if I was able to, but I could also read it to you. You muted yourself, uh, Representative. Uh, I, I pulled it up this morning. On, but on, I would need to to stop being able to talk to you in order to to read it to you. I think, <laughs> or maybe I can just split my screen. Do you want me to do that? Let's try it. It's the same language Tyler Clark gave us. Janine, uh, can she share this, the screen? Norm, I, I um, actually have the language from Tyler, if, if, if that would make it quicker for me to read it. Why don't you? Susan, if she... If she um, Susan. Not hearing you, Susan. Susan, you're muted. Okay. Um, oh, dear. If... Well, um, Ben4 can give you the share screen um, access, or Patrick can read it. Permissions are there. Permissions are there. Okay. So you want to bring it up? Okay. 
Um, you, I, you I, Representative I, Romney, to bring it up. Um, can I do that at this point? Share screen, yes. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> Would it help with Representative Bromley? There, I found it. Okay. Um, I thought I found it. Just scroll there. Let's scroll up a little bit. You're there. Yeah. Get this thing out of the way. There we go. Can everyone else see it? I can see it. I others can see it too. So, yeah. so tell us essentially what it does now. Yeah, um, all it does is it says uh, the existing current language is that on um, the Tickets shall either be 50 cents or, oh, oh dear, I can't see it well enough because this thing is on here. Get myself out of there. Okay, uh, shall be either 50 cents or $1. Um, it was amended in the bill to say, as I recall, 25 cents. The bill says on 25 on shall not exceed one dollar on but where tickets uh, where a charitable organization offers one dollar tickets for sale the charitable organization shall off also offer 25 cent and 50 cent tickets for sale and that's the problem um so this one says that the price shall not exceed $1, so it could be 25 cents, uh, providing that where $1 tickets are for sale, the charitable organization shall also offer 50 cent tickets for sale, which then makes the 25 cents possible but optional. It would also make one cent possible but optional. But so um, what Tyler Clark said was that very, uh, there are some organizations that use the 25 cent ticket, but very few of them, and the other ones are required to buy it, even though they aren't going to use it. So your amendment eliminates section one and two. Yes, that's the problem. You it's want not a problem from my point of view, but it's a problem from most people's point of view. <laughs> you want to make a motion on your amendment? Um, no, because I know it's going to lose. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I speak? Your amendment is not to be considered anymore then if you're not going to make a motion. We could um, put, um, take a straw vote on the, um, the section that I just read without the rest of it and then on uh, come back when we do SB3 and do this one. I don't know where it, what it advances us to finish this bill now. Mr. Chair, can I speak? Oh, Representative Brownie. Yes, I, uh, you know, I reread the language and I was a little confused, but the way it's, it's being uh, discussed now, it actually makes some sense. So I have no problem with us uh, delaying this this uh, vote and uh, waiting for next week or the following week to exec this bill um, with this the this amendment for the to the set the third section of the bill only and uh, so um, and it, by the way just we keep on talking about the the, the charitable the charitable gaming committee I just double checked. That committee goes until 22. So it's more than a year committee. It's uh, like a year and a half committee. So uh, there's certain things here that we don't want to delay that long. But uh, so 
but I, I would suggest, I, I would agree with uh, Representative Almy that we, we delay the vote on this and that we, uh, if she wants to do that amendment or I can do it, uh, we can, we can uh, have this amendment uh, to fix this language and, uh, and then move forward uh, in, a, in a week or two. Uh, Representative uh, Doucette. Yeah, just to speak to that, just to be clear, um, I, I also agree with, with Representative Almy's component, but we are going to uh, address in the amendment uh, the language for the deal size, correct? We're gonna keep that included in a yeah, uh, all we're doing is amending all we're doing is amending section three of the bill. Understood. So so in, in that in that vein I'd i uh, withdraw my motion if that's appropriate. Okay. Okay. We withdraw your second. Representative Bernstein. Yes, of course. I'll withdraw my second. Okay, then we will hold off executing Senate Bill 22. The uh, amendment relative to the 25 cent ticket uh, will be addressed at the next time we meet, which will be next Tuesday when we discuss Senate Bill 3. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would be perfectly happy if Representative Abrami wants to just take my amendment and redo it. Representative Abrami. Okay, no problem, I'll do it. Okay, then you'll draw up the amendment for distributing to the committee members prior to us meeting next Tuesday. Yep, I'll let all, all of us know that that's the, that's the uh, target. Okay. Thank you, and we will hold off exactly that until next week. Next is Senate Bill 27. Senate Bill 27, an act relative to the sale of Lucky 7 tickets. And uh, Representative Bromley. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I make a motion to, uh, uh, to uh, want to pass on Senate Bill 27. Representative Bromley makes a motion ought to pass on Senate Bill 27. 27 seconded by I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Representative Herschel. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, I think it's appropriate now to, to move an amendment to this. Representative Bromley. Right. Amendment. Uh, I move amendment 1236H, which yeah, I, I think was handed out to the committee uh, a week or so ago. Representative Nunes, you want to second that? Yes, sir, I'll second that. Okay. The amendment to so Senate Bill 27, which is amendment 1236H. Representative yes, Brown, do you want to speak to your amendment? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, the more I look at this overall bill, it really is a housekeeping bill uh, with one change, but I'll get back to that when we talk about the bill itself. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but to our deliberations, uh, Charlie McIntyre asked that I uh, file this amendment for situations in which a charity, a charitable organization doesn't fall into one of the bu appropriate buckets uh, to give some latitude. And we heard some testimony from uh, uh, Lisa Allen, I think her name was, uh, on her organization, a uh, restaurant chain that also has a charitable arm, uh, Feed New Hampshire. And <clears throat> the way that what the amendment basically does is it says, uh, you know, the, the exception is, it can be made by the executive director of the lottery, uh, but the organization how to be established with the charitable trust unit of the attorney general's office and has been in existence for a period of two years prior to the application. The charitable works of the organization take place primarily in the state of New Hampshire and C, all charitable gaming revenue raised by the organization shall be used to benefit the state of New Hampshire and its residents. 
So uh, I, 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 there's some things I want to mention, but uh, really on the bill part of it, uh, <clears throat> in that uh, maybe I'll say a bit of it here. What what the original bill does is it it it, it for for both charitable games of chance, which is charitable gaming, and for bingo and uh, lucky seven, the bill uh, recodifies the language that already exists for the most part, and it makes the makes the charitable uh, gaming language and the bingo language identical. Okay, uh, and in terms of the definition of what a charitable organization is, and uh, and and I I, I, I want to get ahead of myself in terms of talking about the bill itself, uh, but all this does is it gives uh, a little latitude for an exception uh, to be made as long as those three criteria are met uh, by the uh, by the organization. So that is basically the amendment. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the amendment. Mr. Chairman, there are two people with their hands up. Um, okay, I didn't see that. Representative Ames. I think uh, Representative Schamberg had his hand up before me. Okay. That's all right. Okay. Representative, Representative Schamberg. Okay. Uh, Representative, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Representative Obrama, uh, when you said the money shall be used for the benefit of the uh, state and the citizens, residents of New Hampshire, if an organization raises the money, do they have to expend it outside their organization or can they just spend it within their organization for themselves? Uh, but uh, I, I, I think it's outside. It's raising money for their organization. And most of these, you know, we've got fraternal organizations. Usually they exist to support uh, charities, if you will. Uh, uh, but again, this, this language is consistent with uh, the way we're defining ch charitable organizations in general. Thank you, Representative Bosch. And Representative Ames. Yeah, um, I guess to start, a couple of questions for Representative Abrami, really. Uh, you've got in here, the uh, first condition is uh, uh, that the organization has to be in existence for a period of at least two years. Right. And the bill is, for reasons that I don't think have ever been fully explained, moving the existing two-year requirement down to one year. Right. So that would be one of the waivers. It's kind of a weird waiver. It's increasing the restriction. But um, why why the two years, one year, why any of this? Well, that, that's the, you, you hit on one of the changes of the bill that from current law is moving the, the period, the waiting period from, uh, one, uh, from uh, two years to one year uh, and uh, it was felt, I guess, by by lottery that this this was a more appropriate waiting period. Uh, and I and then my my thinking was that they kept it at two years for the exception because it is an exception, uh, just to make it a little more difficult uh, and give them more time to to evaluate that charity. Okay, I can. I can understand that the um, one of my difficulties with this is that there were several questions, there were other questions that sort of were raised in the when we were originally dealing with this bill, which we never got back to as a committee. Maybe it's my fault for not raising them, but uh, we never really had the kind of review that I think we we used to do uh, on this bill. Another another issue is. I but I guess I'm getting over onto the I'm getting over onto the bill itself, and maybe I shouldn't. Uh... Yeah, I was going to respond to the bill itself, actually. Yeah. Not to that. Um, any further questions on the amendment? I see no hands. Um, 
Then Representative Bernstein, you want to call the roll on the amendment? Sure, this um, roll call vote is on amendment 1236H to SB 27. We'll begin the roll call vote with Representative Abrami. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Hillary. Yes. Ober. Yes. Set. Yes. Burstein votes yes. Elliot. Yes. Pimonti. Representative Pimonti, you're muted. Sorry about that. Yes. Representative Nunez. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Spillsbury. Yes. Tudor. Yes. Almy. Yes. Ames. Yes. Southworth. Yes. Malloy. Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schamberg. Representative Schamberg votes yes, Mr. Cork. Representative Tucker. No. Representative Gomarlo. Yes. Lothman. Yes. Borg. Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the amendment passes 23 to 1. Now we are on the bill as amended. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to speak to the uh, Representative Bronny. The bill. So uh, there's four parts of the bill. The first part is something that we've already, uh, within another bill that we already voted on. So that is redundant, but that'll be handled by, uh, if passed, it'll be uh, handled by the uh, uh, enrollment process. Uh, but what it does is it, 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 it re really recodifies uh, a bit the, uh, the definitions of a charity is, is uh, and making the, 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 the definition of a charity the same for games of chance as well as for uh, bingo and unlucky seven. So what we got hung up on and I got hung up on was all those 501c codes and uh, the more I studied this the last couple of uh, last week, it was clear, it became clearer to me that uh, it, we weren't creating these codes as new. These, these codes already existed in, in the current statute, uh, first off, and it's just been rearranged uh, within, the, within the document. But the real definition of charitable organization is, as, as it says, means any bona fide religious, charitable, civic, veterans, or fraternal or church organization, including police and firemen's organizations and houses of worship, which shall have been registered with the Secretary of State for at least, it used to say two years, and the change is made to one year. And then it gives, then you also have to meet the one through four underneath it. Uh, and so you have to be, you could be a charitable organization, but you have to be, you have to have uh, document that your organization has a tax exempt status under the Internal Revenue Code, one of those, you know, six, uh, six codes there. In those six codes are other things, what we talked about in, 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 in committee. You know, some of these may be uh, political organizations and things like that. But that's, that's what they did in the original, when they created this original law, is they said, well, we, it has to be a charitable organization and as above, but it has to be also registered with the Internal Re Revenue Code as a, a non uh, a tax exempt, as long as it falls under one of those codes. So uh, we're not creating anything new here. I mean, this has always been the way it has been. Although I, I, I take that back, is that it always was that way in the bingo lucky seven language but now they're, they're putting that same language to make the two languages the same. They're putting it into the charitable uh, organization, the, the Games of Chance statutes. So that's really the, the big change. And that to me is a housekeeping thing that was done uh, uh, with the exception of changing it to one year uh, from the two. 
And then uh, the the, the uh, third thing it did was, uh, uh, I guess the, in the fourth paragraph on page two, it, it, it was a, uh, everywhere where there was a reference to lottery, they changed the word to commission because that was misused. If you recall, I think we discussed this last year and it was in another bill that didn't make it through the process. It's a, the commission is actually commission, meaning the, the winnings, the commission that the organization got, not the lottery. So, so wherever you see lottery commission, they, they changed it to just, they took out lottery and it was just a commission. And then the, 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 final, uh, the final change was in the definition of a deal with Lucky Seven. And it just says deal means a single game of uncirculated Lucky Seven tickets bearing a serial number. So those were the four things that the bill did. Uh, I would I would I would argue that most of these are housekeeping, uh, and uh, that's why I, I I don't think we should wait for our commission to be done, uh, which would be you know not until November of 22. So probably a year and a half away. So that's why I, I, I thought it was wise to just move forward with this. And um, doesn't mean we can't discuss some of these things in the commission, uh, but uh, I think we should just move forward with it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Representative Ames followed by Representative Almey and Uri. Representative Ames. You're muted. Okay, I'll begin again. Um, sorry about that. And thank you uh, to Representative Brahmi for all the work that has gone into this. Um, I, th I basically agree, agree that uh, we can go forward with this. Um, I think the, uh, the biggest issue that's, uh, that needs further work is, is the question of what is a charitable organization? What's the definition going to be? Um, and um, I think that uh, that can be probed and worked on by the commission that we all hope will be established, or it's a committee, isn't it? It's a joint, um, committee. joint committee, yes. Yeah, committee. Um, and uh, that uh, hopefully, hopefully that committee will... Um, bring things together and deal with this string of IRC internal revenue code sections uh, in a coherent way that makes sense and make sure that, that listing those makes sense for our purposes. Um, and, uh, and then there were other issues that I remember raising when we started our look at this bill, maintaining a current list of bona fide members is a requirement is that an appropriate requirement? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but it's, I think it's nothing new and we need to look at that. And I hopefully this committee will look at that among other larger issues too, that that committee will look at. So I guess I'm, I, all of that is to say, um, say, okay, for this, looking at, at this as a, uh, a consolidation, uh, a bringing together concepts uh, between all games of chance and bingo and lucky seven. Um, so that's it. Okay. Uh, Representative Almy, followed by Representative Yearly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think that there was, there seemed to be a major problem which is being uh, in for, not being enforced about maintain a current list of bona fide members for a number of charities. Um, but on, I basically, we have not done a thorough reexamination of charitable gaming regulation um, since it was started. On, and when it was started, it did not include machine gaming. Machine gaming is a lot more addictive. Uh, our regulation seems to consist only of financial. Uh, that is financial of the 
gaming organization itself so that the state and the charities get their money on. It does not include the problem of the addiction part of charitable gaming, uh, as it is now called in this state. Uh, everywhere else, it's called casino gaming. Uh, and there's a lot more regulation and it provides a lot more money to the state on and um, it's a very different ball of wax than what on um, that we've got regulations for. And so I am opposed to this bill passing, uh, especially until there is an actual study of uh, what needs to be done for regulation in charitable gaming. We don't even know if all the parts of this, I presume that all the parts of this are going to be on, uh, enforced in some way by the Lottery Commission, but the parts of it that have to do with on where the money is actually going uh, is something that has to be looked at by that commission. Uh, who who is deciding where where the money goes? The the one that we just the amendment that we just passed could allow for some major difficulties since the attorney general's office can't do proper oversight um, in terms of Burger King setting up such a organization and on sending the money only to its own subsidiaries in some way. So, but on um, that's true also of a lot of other th of these groups. Once, once now we have two forms of mach machine gaming that are very close to slot machines that are going to be all over the state and uh, we're getting almost no money from them and they are uh, unregulated except for the financial flow. And that's, that is my real worry that we are not being serious about regulation of something the other states regulate. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Yearly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the comments that uh, Representative Ames made regarding uh, following the IRC and uh, uh, is, 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 is a, a accurate regarding the interface. However, that is something that requires a committee to study, as Representative Olney pointed out. This particular amendment and this particular bill are immaterial to that. Um, as the gaming is going on right now, and for the most part, it's going for charitable items. I can think of several uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars that are going to uh, disabled individuals that are going to the uh, nephrology clinic up in uh, uh, Dartmouth by the Knights of Columbus, uh, uh, the uh, Lions Club doing uh, uh, blind assistance, uh, the, the Masons doing uh, their thing. Each one of uh, the various uh, fraternities has their things into uh, in danger or to uh, restrict their ability to continue to raise funds for these charitable items uh, at this point uh, in time would seem to be uh, disadvantageous to the population of New Hampshire. At the same time, what Representative Almy speaks of uh, a review and a discussion and a development is something that the commission hopefully will be set up to do. And I would urge uh, this committee to set up an ad hoc committee if uh, the commission doesn't go forward uh, to discuss this uh, further to make sure that the structure of the gaming is done by a separate entity affiliated with in some fashion so that we do know where the money is going and when they hold a, uh, a charitable poker night at the uh, at the river or at, at Seabrook uh, you know where the money is going in the same way that you would if you were doing a lottery or a uh, raffle excuse me uh, those are my only comments I support the bill uh, as amended thank you Representative Bromley You're muted, Pat. 
Yeah, my wife came into the room to pick something off the printer and I, <laughs> well, the printer started printing, so I had to mute myself. So uh, remember our House Bill 565, we passed unanimous to form a commission. It was Representative Ames's bill. Uh, that moved on, it passed on consent calendar, went over to the Senate, it passed unanimous, but they put it on the table. As I told you, everyone last week, I spoke to, uh, I reached out to Senator D'Alessandro and we agreed, uh, he even suggested that we broaden ours, uh, our membership to four. And uh, we discussed this last week and we're, we're, we're doing it in a very bipartisan way. We're gonna have two, two from the majority party and two from the minority party from the House side. And there's gonna be one from the Senate uh, uh, Finance Committee and one from the Senate Ways and Means Committee. So he and I this morning just uh, testified before Leggy administration where there's an omnibus bill, Senate Bill 100, and this was part four. And the chair allowed me and, and Senator D'Alessandro to speak first on section four. And we agreed, you know, you know we're, we're good. Uh, so I, I think this is definitely gonna pass the Senate Bill uh, 100, part four at the very least is gonna pass and uh, we're on our way. Uh, with two members of the Senate and four members of the House uh, to, to look at this. And we all agree, we, it's time. Um, we can't say we haven't looked at this in the last, uh, since the beginning of time. I was on a commission, uh, it was more than a committee, it was a commission with state police. We had, uh, you know, all sorts of people on it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, I think we got a good group. Uh, we'll have six members and we can take a thorough look at this all the things that have been discussed today. Thank you. Representative Ames. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Patrick, Representative Abrami. That's a good report and uh, it gives me uh, even more encouragement to go ahead with this, this, um, this bill, knowing that uh, more work is going to be done. So thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 27? Uh, motion about to pass with amendment. Send none and Representative Bernstein, would you call the vote? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's begin the roll call vote on SB 27. The motion is ought to pass with amendment. The amendment is 1236H. Representative Abrami. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Ulrey. Yes. Ober. Yes. Doucette. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me, the clerk votes yes. Elliot. Representative Elliot. Representative Elliot. Representative Elliott, uh, please cast your vote on SB 27. The motion is OTP as amended. Un unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Bob. Yes. Thank you, sir. Representative Pimonti. Yes. Nunez. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Spillsbury. Yes. Tudor? Yes. Almy? No. Ames? Yes. Southward? Yes. Malloy? Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schomburger? Schomburger. Representative Schamberg votes yes, Mr. Bernstein. Representative Tucker? Yes. Gomarlo? Yes. Lofman? Yes. Gorg? Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion of OTP as amended passes 23 to 1. Is there any objection to put it on consent? I think I want to write a blurb. Thank you. Okay, it will go on regular calendar.
Next, we're going to take up another name of chance bill, which is Senate Bill 139-FN relative to bingo dates. Uh, Representative Tudor. Representative Tudor moves to retain HB 139. Representative Tudor moves to retain HB, I mean, Senate Bill 139. I'm Sec sorry, Senate Bill. <laughs> Sec Senate seconded by. I'll second. Representative Bromley. Representative Tudor, you want to speak to your motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, some of the committee members felt that the bill might have unintended consequences and, and wanted the study committee, once it's formed, to look at it and advise the committee on, on how to, how was the best way to proceed with this bill. So uh, we wanted to move to retain it. Any further discussion on the motion to retain Senate Bill 139? Any further discussion on Senate Bill 139? Seeing none, Representative Bernstein, you want to take the vote on retaining Senate Bill 139? Sure, let's begin the vote with Representative Abrami. Yes. Uh, Representative Johnson. Yes. Ullery. Yes. Ober. No. Doucette. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Representative Elliott. Yes. Pimonti. Yes. Nunez. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Billsbury. Yes. Tudor. Yes. Almy. Yes. Ames. Yes. Southward. Yes. Malloy. Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schamberg. Representative Schamberg votes yes, Mr. Cork. Thank you, sir. Repres <coughs> Pardon me, Representative Tucker. Yes. Go Marlow. Yes. Lofman. Yes. Borg. Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion to retain SB 139 carries by a vote of 23 to 1. And we shall retain Senate Bill 139 in committee. Next is executive session on Senate Bill 101-FN, increasing the minimum gross business income required for filing a business profits tax return. Representative Jordan, yearly. Representative Yearly. Yeah, I had to find the thing here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I, I move ought to pass. And I have an amendment to offer um, that Representative Almy put together. Thank you. Before we do that, uh, Representative Yearly moves ought to pass. Representative Almy, do you second that? Yes. Representative Almy seconds. Representative Yearly. Yeah, I would move uh, unauthorized amendment uh, 2021 1367 H, which was mailed out by uh, Representative Almy yesterday. Unfortunately, I was in the Senate while she was doing the stuff we'd worked out. Basically, what this amendment does is increases the. Hold on. All right. And Representative Yearly moves ought to pass on. Amendment 1367H and second by Representative Almy. Yes. Second by Rep Rep Representative Almy. Go ahead, uh, Representative Yearly. After some confusion uh, with OLS and uh, um, DRA, we got it together and the right dates are in the right place. Uh, basically, what this does is has language that allows for the um, um, I can't think of the word here. Uh, mimic it uh, in a biannual manner of the uh, uh, filing threshold, starting with ninety-two thousand dollars, and then working forward from there. Uh, 
with an applicable date of December 31st, 2020. The act takes effect January, uh, July 1st, 2021. And for the tax years beginning January 1st, 2023, the governor sets up uh, the uh, adjustment uh, based upon the previous two year period from the consumer price index for the Northeast region. I think I've said it right. Any further discussion, Representative Almy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd just like to point the fiscal note for 92,000 is $2.6 million a year, um, which is about a million more than what the original bill was. But it does bring us up on, I asked DRA to calculate on where we would be with inflation from when the last threshold was set. Uh, and it is about $100 off, I think, from 92,000 uh, 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 as a threshold. So we are about as close as you can get. And from there, we keep up with whatever inflation sends us. Um, so that we wouldn't have uh, smaller businesses being uh, uplifted into paying BPT when, in fact, they aren't getting any more real money than they were getting before. And we also won't have a shock uh, even of 2.5 million, 2.6 million uh, this year. I think our shock for BET was greater at the time. Um, to, uh, to our revenues, we will gradually adapt to it. So um, I hope that everybody will vote for this. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, uh, Representative Bernstein, call the vote on the amendment. The motions will opt to pass. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is for Amendment 1367H. We'll begin the roll call vote with Representative Abrams. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Ulrey. Uh, yes. <laughs> Over. Yes. Doucette. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Representative Elliott. Yes. Piemonte. Yes. Nunes. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Billsbury. Yes. Tudor. Yes. Representative Almy. Yes. Ames. Yes. Southworth. Yes. Malloy. Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schamberg. Representative <laughs> Schamberg votes yes, Mr. Cork. Thank you, sir. Representative Tucker. Yes. Go Marlow. Yes. Lofman. Yes. Gorg. Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Good job, everyone. Mr. Chair, the vote is 24 to nothing. The, the amendment carries. Mr. Chair, uh, who sends this over? Do I send this over to OLS to get the little imprimatur stamp on it? All right, that'll happen uh, after we take the vote on the bill. Thank you. The, now the motion on the floor is ought to pass on Senate Bill 101 with Amendment 1367H. Further discussion? Any further discussion on Senate Bill 101 as amended? Seeing none, then Representative Bernstein, would you call the vote? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll remind everyone just to hover over that mute button, or the unmute button. We'll begin the roll call vote on SB 101 as amended with Representative Abrami. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Ulrey. Yes. Ober. Yes. Doucette. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Representative Elliott. Yes. Pimonti. Yes. Nunez. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Billsbury. Yes. Tudor. Yes. Almy. Yes. Ames. Yes. Southworth. 
Yes. Malloy? Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schamberg. Representative Schamberg is hovering. Yes. Representative Tucker. Yes. Joe Marlowe. Yes. Lofman. Yes. Gorg. Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion carries 24 to nothing. The motion about to pass as amended 24 to nothing. Without objection, we'll go on consent. Any objection? Um, Mr. Chairman, do things that cost or save money have to go on regular calendar? Good question. I don't remember. I think they do. So then why don't we just put it on the regular calendar? Thank you, Representative Almey. Now we're going to executive session on Senate Bill 103-FN relative to nexus provision for certain disaster related or emergency related work performed in the state. Representative Bernstein. Yeah, I'd like to move OTP on SB 103. Representative Bernstein moves o OTP on 103. Do we have a second? I'll second. Representative Alamy seconds. Representative Bernstein, you wanna to speak to your motion? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill waives certain business registration, licensing, and taxation requirements for out-of-state businesses performing work in New Hampshire during a declared state of emergency. This narrowly targeted bill will permit out-of-state businesses to focus on emergency restoration of critical utility and communication services during a declared state of emergency. Passage of this bill will enable New Hampshire to join at least 32 other states, including Maine, Vermont, and Connecticut, to streamline emergency infrastructure restoration by allowing out-of-state businesses to bypass onerous licensing and registration requirements so they may restore vital services as rapidly as possible. Thank you, uh, Representative Bromley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> the, only, the only discussion we had on this bill and, and the work session uh, really was on the notification paragraph on the second page uh, where it says the uh, that the uh, any out-of-state business that is present in the state of uh, uh, or conducts operations in the state to perform disaster related or emergency related work during the disaster response period shall provide upon request of the Secretary of State a written statement that such business is in the state for purpose of responding to a state of disaster or emergency. And the question became, well, how, how does the Secretary of State know they're here? So I think I said to the committee that I would reach out to the prime sponsor and then uh, actually to the Secretary of State's office, which I did. I, I talked to Rep uh, Senator Bradley, who said he, he, didn't, he didn't view this as a problem. Uh, he directed me to uh, Maura Weston, who's a lobbyist for, I think, AT&T, who reminded me, Pat, this is just for... Uh, te telecom companies and for uh, utilities. And we have a limited number of both in the state. Uh, <clears throat> so we know who they are. So then I, I called uh, 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 David Scanlon at the Secretary of State's office, who is basically number two over there. I think most of you know that. Uh, and I, I read the paragraph to him. He says, I'm aware of it. He says, we don't, we don't have a problem with the language. Uh, we, we know if, if there's a true state of emergency called, we, we'll know who to go to, to, to make sure they, they uh, let us know they're in the state. So uh, that was the response I got from the Secretary of State's office. Just wanted to pass that along. So I, I definitely support the bill too. So thank you. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 103? 
Seeing none, Representative Bernstein, you want to call the vote on Senate Bill 103-FN. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will begin the roll call vote on SB 103 with Representative Abrani. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Overy. Yes. Ober. Yes. Doucette. Yes. The clerk votes yes. Representative Elliott. Yes. Pimonti. Yes. Nunez. Yes. Mooney. Yes. Spillsbury. Yes. Tudor. Yes. Almy. Yes. Ames. Yes. Southworth. Yes. Malloy. Yes. The Honorable Representative Thomas <laughs> T. Chamber. Representative Bernstein, you read that very well. Uh, I vote yes. Thank you, sir. Representative Tucker. Yes. Go Marlowe. Yes. Lofman. Yes. Gord. Yes. Hacken Phillips. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion or of ought to pass carries 24 to nothing. The vote being 24 to nothing, motion passes. Uh, any objection? Go on consent calendar. I see no objection, so I will go on your consent calendar. Now we've come out of executive session. Anybody that- uh, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. You have SB 112. Oh, that's right. We are still in executive session. SB 112, um, which is relative to historic racing. Representative Bromley. Chair, I make a motion to retain Senate Bill 112. Representative Bromley makes a motion to retain Senate Bill 112. Representative Schamberg seconds. And Representative Schamberg seconds. Representative Brown, you. Uh, real quick, uh, as we know that this is this bill is identical to House Bill 626 that uh, passed uh, passed the House and the Senate. Uh, so, what well, the reason to retain is just in case something goes off the tracks between now and uh, the governor signing it. I I, I I would appreciate a fallback position by keeping this alive. Thank you. In addition to being in those two places. Um, essentially, this bill is in the budget uh, that we had passed. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 112, the motion to retain? No discussion. Representative Bernstein, you want to call the vote? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will begin the roll call vote on SB 112. The motion is to retain. Let's start with Representative Pat Abrami. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Ulrey? Yes. Ober? Yes. Doucette? Uh, yes. The clerk votes yes. Elliott? Yes. Pimonti? Yes. Nunez? Yes. Mooney? Yes. Spillsbury? Yes. Tudor? Yes. Almy? Yes. Ames? Yes. Southworth? Yes. Malloy? Yes. Representative Thomas C. Schamberg? Representative Schamberg votes yes, Mr. Court. Thank you, sir. Representative Tucker? Yes. Joe Marlowe? Yes. Lofman? Yes. Gord? Yes. Hacken Phillips? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Chairman Major. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion to retain SB 112 passes 24 to nothing. For the motion to retain, passing 24 to nothing, Senate Bill 112 will be retained in committee. Now we are out. Uh, 
of executive session. So we have left for um, bills. The Senate Bill 22, which Representative Bromney is going to uh, provide an amendment for, and Senate Bill 3, which has to do with the PPP loans being uh, exempt from tax. Does anybody have anything they want to add to what we know about Senate Bill 3 at this point in time? I'm having the DRA come in tomorrow to further try to clarify the revenues that we have that's above plan by an amount and trying to segregate it into two pieces. One piece that has to do with if Senate Bill 3 passes, how much of this is associated with that 174 we already have there and how much will have to be refunded. And another piece we've asked them to look at is that there's been a, a number of stimulus packages since, since the pandemic started that have been applied to our state, which affects revenues. It keeps people employed uh, and that, and therefore, it, generates a profit that would not have happened. And we need to understand about how much of that excess that we have right now is associated with that, because that's more of a one-time event, even though it may be spread out over a few years. Once the pandemic is over and we're back to normal, that is not going to be with us. And so they need to understand uh, that there's a certain amount of that excess that we have is associated with one-time money and, and a certain amount that's associated with money that we probably, that we will have to refund the Senate Bill 3 passes as is. So um, we need we will be provided more information tomorrow on that. Uh, any further questions? Yeah. Representative Bromley, followed by Representative Almy and Representative Tucker. So I, I got a couple of emails yesterday, and I guess we all did, that uh, it sounds like uh, uh, Chairman Yellen, uh, the Treasury has come out with some guidance um, uh, and I haven't had a chance to read it yet, um, but that, that's a that's a factor in this whole discussion. That yes, whether or not uh, they will, um, if we pass for SB, if we pass SB three, whether the uh, forgiveness of the grant revenue, uh, can, uh, which would now then be non-taxable, if we pass SB three, if we can use some of the whatever that, I, I lose track of the names of these, the, the, the $1.9 trillion bill. Rescue um, plan. Th thank you. Uh, whether we can use that to offset this uh, loss in uh, revenue. So that that's a factor that we, I think that was the last piece that we're waiting to hear about. So, but I, but I don't need more detail. I haven't read it yet. So, and maybe someone else has. And the only other thing while I'm on, <laughs> Representative Ami, can you, can you help me out in, uh, and give me the amendment number later on uh, SB 22 that you had. So I, when I refer to all of us. I can send it to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I yeah. thought I'd send it to everyone back right, then, but Maybe. I may not have. <laughs> okay, thank you. And um, I downloaded what I could about what just came out yesterday on that, on the American Rescue Plan. But we really need to have somebody that understands this come before the committee so that we can ask them, get a feeling what we can and what we can't do with this money. 
Uh, and so I'm trying to work that out so that uh, somebody such as who we had before can come and make that presentation to the committee. Representative Almy and then Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did manage to listen into that last night. I had to beg off of something I'd promised to do. Uh, and neither the presentation nor the document that they sent out with it had enough specifics to answer any of the questions that we have. They did not mention the PPP loans in the, the document or the presentation. Um, and I think that um, well, and and there are there's some stuff that I consider rather worrisome about your tax cuts, on uh, that on um, the the way they seem to be defining economic growth. So it's defined in another section than the one specifically about tax cuts. On uh, is that on. Um, that it would you would have to have had a a revenue loss of a certain amount, I think through this year. I can't quite remember. I read it yet last night for the first time, um, but um, I I do have a link, and uh, everybody should have the link soon of on um, the to ask specific questions of the man that has put, been put in charge of the recovery unit in the treasury. Uh, and I don't know how long it's gonna take him to ask questions that come from a specific uh, state about our specific issues. But I um, wanted to uh, mention that here today before trying to use the link to say did you forget to talk about PPP? And is that thing we got last week still still valid, which would mean that we could recover that particular money from them? But I am not sure whether we could recover all of it because our loss will, will come over four years, I think you said earlier today, and DRA will be talking to us about tomorrow. And... Um, they may only allow recovery for for three years or two. So uh, we need to get that kind of thing specified. I don't think anybody except Treasury is going to be able to specify it for us, but we do have a way that we can ask them. This is why the DRA will be here tomorrow to help clarify some of these questions that we will need to ask Treasury or somebody representing Treasury. Uh, but the RA needs to get their act together, which they have, which they're working on. Because uh, I was surprised that they could tell me that the PPP loans, so there was a certain percentage that would be affected this year, next year. And, and the bulk will be the next two years and a trivial amount the fourth year. Uh, um, Representative Tucker follow, followed by Representative Ames. Yeah, I, I would like to tomorrow have someone go over what the people who got these loans, what, what did they think were the controlling factors on whether they'd ever have to pay taxes or not? I'd sort of like to focus on that at the outset because that's what people are talking about. And it's clear that ways and means has to think about a, a bigger picture, but I am very interested in what individual citizens of New Hampshire thought when they cashed their checks. What did they think were the rules? And why did they think that? I'd like to go over that because we've done a lot of talking and I still would like to know the answer to that. I think we all would. Thank you. Representative Ames. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I have uh, 
looked at the documents sent out by the Treasury. I've read some of them. The uh, key document that has the detail in it is uh, what they call their interim final rule. It's basically a, a published ruling on uh, implementation of this act, the American Rescue Plan Act. And it has detailed provisions in it that relate to um, what in shorthand are called tax cuts. Um, and you can find it easily um, just by searching for um, RP um, interim final rule and you'll get it. It's, uh, I, I warn you, it's a 160 page document. Um, so uh, a couple of things that are relevant to SB3 and then more broadly. The SB3 relevance is, uh, is what's been mentioned, the conformity issue. Um, if, if New Hampshire conforms, um, in effect, it's a tax cut conforms to the RP rule that doesn't, that excuses from taxation, the PPP loan forgiveness. forgiveness. Um, New Hampshire's decision to conform quite clearly, they said this before um, in a statement earlier, uh, but the, it, it's in this interim fi final rule quite clearly um, would not be counted against New Hampshire as a tax cut. That's my reading. I assume it will be DRA's reading. I think it's clear. Um, and it's uh, somewhere around page 86. I, I seem to have misplaced my, my printout of this, but about page 86 of that interim final rule. Um, then going beyond that, I think what's really important to, for ways and means to get an understanding of is the ongoing process that Treasury will use to assess whether New Hampshire in adopting one or another tax cut trespasses on the standard that Treasury will apply in determining whether there will be some clawback, if you will, of, um, of RP revenues. The, and there's a, a lot of language in there about how, uh, how the uh, federal government will do that assessment. Um, and a lot of it involves the kind of work that Ways and Means is very much into, which is estimating revenues associated with this, that, or the other um, tax decision. Um, so we've got to figure out our, a number of things, but one, one is uh, exactly what's expected of the state. And the second one is what role um, the legislature and ways and means should play with respect to these judgments and my understanding, again, this was a quick reading of it, is that uh, it's a year to year process. So um, there, it's a repetitive, reiterative kind of thing, looking at uh, performance. They try to, try to allow for a full discount of, uh, of revenue gains or losses that are related to economic conditions that have nothing to do with uh, or maybe indirectly, very indirectly, uh, relate to the stimulus of the federal money, but uh, that are not directly related to uh, to the provisions of RP and its grant money. Um, so we've got to be sure that we understand what's expected of us and that we're um, doing what we should be doing as a legislative body. Uh, I think that's pretty important and then there are, just to note, there are what you might call safe harbors. There, there are rules of thumb that the federal government will apply, um, including a standard inflation factor that would be presumptive for uh, each state that if, uh, if revenue came in above revenue from the 
sort of general fund, education trust fund kinds of uh, money that we have um, came in above uh, or below estimated money. There would be this sort of test that would be applied. And um, if you were in the right place relative to that test, there would be no further inquiry. It's sort of a safe harbor. Um, and it's really complicated, so I'm not sure I'm fully ex I'm explaining it exactly right. But uh, anyway, there's a lot of work to be done here, and uh, hopefully DRA will help us work through that, uh, including telling us who in the, on the executive side will be working on these issues. So that's it. Thank you. And before I go to Representative Almy, <clears throat> in addition, the American Recovery Act affects funds that are going to go directly to the, your local community, your local county, and the state. <clears throat> so we need to understand as legislators, especially with our county, because we all set the county budget, what we can and what we can't do with these funds, as well as what we can and can't do for the state. And we need to help the, our community that we live in understand what they can and can't do. Uh, so we've got a lot of work ahead of us because of this. Representative Almey. Thank you. I got a couple of things now. On taking the last first on what they sent us that I can send, send to everybody on was a synthesis document of what Representative Ames was just talking about, plus a lot more including, and they were more interested in talking to municipal and county heads than they were in talking to a state in that, in that meeting that I listened to last night. Um, so that you could start from that synthesis and then go to the 165 page document to search for county, for instance, and find a lot of the material. What I'm really most worried about on um, the tax cut side is what um, is the timing of when, what period they, they mean, and maybe they were more specific in the 165 pager, on uh, what time period they meant when they said growth from what time? Because we got a lot of money in just now. And it's the year 19, it's the standard. It's the year 19, but whose fiscal year? <laughs> That's what, on, on, and they, they, yeah, they did say fiscal year once, but they didn't say whether it was state or, or federal. Um, and there's a big difference there. So, um, that needs to be cleared up and how long they would allow us to be, uh, whether if we recalculate year to year, then since we lost money in 20, if we weren't able to re, re, recover in 21, could we recover that in 22? Um, these are all things that these are all things we we need to to get straight once, and, we, once we understand what the rules are right well on um, yeah and that's where I hope DRA can can help us with that if not we're gonna you're going to have to be asking a set of specific questions to the Treasury it isn't, uh, it isn't only DRA it's, we need to get some expertise here that can any questions that we have of the treasury. Yeah, but uh, I don't think we're going to get a person from the treasury to our committee. Uh, so, uh, and I think we have specific questions based on New Hampshire's tax system. So I think we may have to depend on you sending a list of formal questions and seeing how soon we can get the answers back. But um, the or DRA sending it. Um, the other thing was that we could try to invite a chamber head or two to, to talk to us about 
Edie's question, Representative Tucker's question about uh, what the applicants for PPP thought they were getting into when they when they got the loans that they were planning on getting forgiven. And on that, on um, we've got some chamber links that we could call on. I know the, the one in the Upper Valley has been very strong in, in helping businesses in our region to, to apply for these and work their way through them. And I presume that's true also in Nashua and probably in a number of, I, they have all been talking to each other. So probably any of the chamber heads could, could talk to us about what that was. Right, we need to understand those things, but number one, the most important is the rules and how, how we can utilize these without having to pay money back. So we channel it in the right. Once we understand that, then, then we can address what people think and other things and what, and what we can and can't do. Mr. Chairman, is our time frame for this the 27th or I think it is. Unfortunately, uh, we need to address Senate Bill 3 and we need to have it out by the 27th. Yeah, that, around the 27th. So that's one issue. The other issue is to understand the rules on the American Recovery Funds. And once we understand that, we'll probably understand the rules on the other stuff. And so the sooner we can do that, and hopefully we can understand it before we pass a budget, because if we pass, uh, and as you say, if we pass a budget that cuts some taxes, we may be uh, foolish because we may lose more money. We, we may want to delay some of those things so that we don't, it, it, it doesn't interfere with the rules for utilizing the American recovery funds and the others. So we have to understand those things. We don't know that yet. We need guys like Representative Ames and, and, and the smart people that we have on our committee, plus more, to ask these questions and get answers. All right, anything else? Uh, Representative Southworth. Uh, thank you. Just briefly, for Dover, um, it's been fairly consistent that people have said they were hoping the loans would be forgiven. Um, but on the other hand, um, especially the larger businesses paid the estimated tax as if they were going to have to pay. So they kind of, you know, have looked at both sides. And I have a feeling that's probably fairly consistent. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and so they contributed to this bump that we had in business taxes that we see now that uh, if this passes as is, we're going to have to refund. It would seem that way, yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else comments? Representative Elmi, do you have another comment? <laughs> You're muted. I just got completely muted. Uh, I didn't really mean to hit it anyway, but I think that our, we've got a pretty clear idea from the local CPAs that on the local businesses, pretty much all, if they had enough profit to worry about it, took that option that um, Representative Southworth is talking about. My problem is how many of the subsidiaries of the mega corporations that pay most of our tax on 
took that and were incorporated into the water's edge filing. And how much would, might we lose from that? And did DR, was DRA thinking of that problem? Tomorrow you'll have an opportunity to bring that question up again to the DRA. Thanks. Any other comments before we break? So what time do we start tomorrow? Tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Anything else, anybody? Well, oh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, how long do I have to write a blurb? Minority one. <laughs> um, I, I, since it's going to be a while, if we have all the blurbs in by Thursday next week, that would be fine. Thank you. Okay, then uh, we'll break until tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.